What's going on everybody? C4 here today, continuing with our post-draft grades, going by division, and we're going to be taking a look at the NFC South, where all the teams in this division, I think this is uh, slightly hit, or probably if you took the average of all the grades, it's probably right up there with the NFC East in terms of videos we've done for the highest overall grades within the division. So, once again, all the teams continuing to try to one-up each other. We're going to be starting with the Atlanta Falcons, who at pick 26 selected Tack McKinley, the outside linebacker or defensive end hybrid from UCLA. I remember someone in one of my videos commented uh, that they, were play they, they solidified him playing one position. I just know he's pretty much going to play on the opposing side of Vic Beasley. And getting him at 26, I mean, that's pretty much where he was going to fall with the medical uh, you know, I, I, can't, I think it's a shoulder, I believe. That's where his injury's at. If he didn't have that injury, he probably would have went maybe upwards of 10 picks ahead. So I'm going to give this a B plus. Fits a position to need. I think really looking at the Atlanta Falcons, I think edge rush and adding some interior offensive linemen would have helped them out a lot. And, and you're really going after the edge rush at pick 26. You can't be mad at that. So I'm giving that a B plus. Third round pick, 75. Let's select Duke Riley, the linebacker from LSU. Very similar play style as Deion Jones. I don't think he has nearly as much upside. He's just not in the same athletic category. But definitely a fairly similar type linebacker to what you get there. And I think that's a nice pick. Again, I would have rather than maybe address the offensive line to get a little bit better grade. But I'm going to say B. I think Duke Riley, uh, he didn't really test particularly well at the combine. Uh, you know, all things. I, just, I felt like a lot of people were just, you know, trying to make him the next Deion Jones. I mean, he didn't test bad by any means, but everyone was just like, oh, my God. I thought, you know, undersized. He's, I think he's like 230. And I think he, what, he ran like a 4'6", 4'7", something around that way. It wasn't a bad combine, but it just felt like they just kept trying to like, oh, look, he's going to be Deion Jones again. You know those LSU linebackers. But it's still definitely not a bad pick by any means. And I'm like I said, B, that's a good grade for me. A lot of people probably think I'm a hard ass in the comment section below. But I think Duke Riley could come in and really compete with Devondre Campbell for the Will linebacking spot. Uh, to play back there with Deion Jones. To make a nice little LSU combination, which must feel a little bit dirty for Dan Quinn, uh, being a former Florida Gator DC. Going to the fourth round, 136, they got Sean Harlow, the center, who I'm pretty sure is more so a guard, but they considered him a center here. Uh, from Oregon State, not a bad pick. Again, I think addressing the interior of their offensive line is exactly what they needed to do. I don't think Harlow will be as good of a pick then, you know, in the third round, who's I think um, Dan Finney was still there. I don't know if the if the Chargers picked before the Falcons. I assume they did, obviously. Um, Farrell's not a bad pick. Definitely in the right direction of solidifying the interior. But I, don't, I can't give that much higher than a C. Fifth round, 149. Like a DeMonte KZ, the corner from San Diego State, who had excellent production last season. A little bit undersized. I'm giving this a B. Really good pick. Great, great value there in the fifth round. As KZ was probably going to go in the fourth or fifth. So I like the, the improvement back there to continue to keep getting better in the secondary. Second, fifth round pick, 156. They took Brian Hill, the running back from Wyoming. He was a guy that had a lot of draft hype. Uh, kind of tested, not amazing. But great production at Wyoming. I figure, you know, this is going to be more so a pick and a player that you can assume once all the things play out between Freeman and Coleman. I think they're only going to keep one of them. I think a guy like Brian Hill can emerge to be the backup to whoever they decide to keep between Freeman and Coleman. I assume it will be Freeman. But then again, Freeman might want a lot more money and they could get, you know, better return investment, better value in a Tevin Coleman. You know, that's going to be something you have to watch out for. Falco fans, because you're not going to be able to retain both of them. Come on, that's not how things work. And with their final pick at 174, they took Eric Salbert. That's probably not how you pronounce it, but that's how you pronounce it up here in Canada. The tight end from Drake, just another solid guy. C, for an overall grade for the Atlanta Falcons of a B. Not a bad grade at all. Uh, going on next to the New Orleans Saints, who at pick 11 took Marshawn Lattimore, the corner from Ohio State. Somehow he slipped all the way down to 11. I couldn't believe it when that was happening. I was screaming at my TV for the Philadelphia Eagles to trade up and jump the Saints for Lattimore, but he was sitting right there for him. So that is an A-plus pick. The Saints need to go especially at number 11, the best defensive player available. And I don't think in their wildest dreams they assumed Lattimore was going to be there. I mean, top athlete, debatably the top corner. It was between him and Sidney Jones. Then when Sidney Jones went down with an injury, you had Lattimore, who's you know phenomenal athlete. This is a great pick for the Saints, and I believe he instantly becomes the top corner on the depth chart. So that's an A-plus all day long. Then at pick 32, they took Ryan Ramchick, the tackle from Wisconsin. My highest offensive tackle available, but because... Really, I think, you know, this is a future forward-thinking move, I think. I think Streif still may hold on to the starting right tackle spot. Obviously, no one's touching Taron Armstead. So maybe next year, Streif, I mean, what is he, 32-33? You're planning for the future here in Ramchick, but I think it might have been more beneficial for them to go defense back-to-back -back in the first round. Um, there were reports that they were going to get Reuben Foster. That's why the Niners traded up to select him ahead of them. 
If they would have got Lattimore and Foster, that would have been perfect first round for the Saints. But Ramchick's not a bad pick at all. Just not so much, you know, for the now. It's for the later. And it seems like, we, you know, the Saints really want to do it for the now. Because, you know, how many, who knows how much longer Drew Brees is going to be there. But Ryan Ramchick, overall, not a bad pick. So I'll give that a B-. minus. Going to the second round pick, 42. They got Marcus Williams, the safety from Utah. Not a bad pick in terms of the player. I think Marcus Williams has his talent. But looking at the Saints' defense, I would assume safety would be the spot that they're all right on. Seems like they're fairly high on Vaughn Bill. And, you know, some things have probably seemed to be said between Kenny Vaccaro and I don't know if it's Sean Payton, the D.C. there. Uh, who is it? The D.C. is um, former head coach Dennis Allen. Is that who it is? But I remember, like, it seems like the beginning of last season, maybe it's a year ago, maybe I'm a year or two removed, but didn't, like, Vicaro get benched for some reason, like he was on the trade block? But it seems like he played down the stretch for the Saints, and he played fairly high level. So, you know, looking at the Saints' defense, that being said, it seems like safety is something they're high on versus getting a linebacker, edge rush. So I think it was just the wrong position to address at 42, so I'm going to have to give that a C. At pick 67 in the third round, they got Alvin Kamara, the running back from Tennessee, and, you know, a lot of people are kind of crapping on this pick. You know, obviously, with Adrian Peterson and Mark Ingram there, running back's not a major need. But with a guy like Alvin Kamara, who had first-round potential talent, is still there at 67, and you will be able to utilize him as a primary receiving back. I mean, Mark Ingram can catch the ball, but still, I wouldn't say he's a receiving back. We all know AP ain't catching the ball. So a guy like Alvin Kamara certainly has his use in that offense. So I don't hate that pick as much as other people. I'll give it a C+. Again, the Saints should be really just lined up on defense here. Uh, even though, you know, maybe it was too hard to pass on Kamara. Definitely C-plus with some upside. Definitely Ford thing, because clearly Adrian Peterson is not a long-term option, and maybe they'll re-sign Mark Ingram. And Ingram and Kamara is a two-headed back field. Not bad, not bad. Uh, in the third round, pick 76, they got Alex Anzalone, the linebacker from Florida. You know, as a Gator fan, I can tell you that he's definitely nowhere near as good a linebacker as Jared Davis, but Jared Davis won the first round. And Anzalone coming here in the third round, 76, I think that's good value, very solid value. I'm not actually going to say that he should come in and, you know, start, get some meaningful starting minutes, but he's a guy that will be able to contribute on special teams, provide linebacking depth for that team, and maybe compete uh, at some point to, you know, with Dan Danelle Ellerby, perhaps. But it's definitely a very safe pick in Anzalone. That's a C+. Plus. Uh, third round, 103, we got Trade Hedrickson, the defensive end from Florida Atlantic. I really do like that pick. He tested incredibly well at the Combine. Uh, you know, have him listed as an outside linebacker. I assume, for my money, he will be a defensive end. And I honestly think he is incredible upside. Got to wait and see. Certainly has to earn his, you know, his his meal. I don't know if that's like even an analogy in, the, in training camp. But I think, you know, defensive end is wide open. They have Alex Okafor, Trey Hedrickson, Daryl Tapp. You sh- I think the cream's going to rise to the top, and I would not be surprised to see Trey Hedrickson end up being an eventual starter at defensive end, opposed from Jordan. I was going to butcher it and say Jordan Cameron. Cameron Jordan. He's not a tight end. Uh, then finish a note at uh, 196 in the sixth round. They get al Quadin Muhammad from Miami, the U. This guy has a lot of off-the-field issues, but while he's on the field at Miami, he was fairly productive. I thought he was going to go on draft it. I get the upside. It's a risky pick, but if it does put it all together, you know, the athletic ability is there. Uh, so I'm just going to give that a C as it stands right now. For an overall grade, a B- minus for the Saints. I would have liked them maybe to invest their higher picks in defense. Really, if they went 32, they went defense. And then in the second round, they didn't go safety. Um, I think that might have been what's best, more beneficial. Go linebacker at defensive end at one of these positions. But overall, not a bad draft for the Saints. And they did address all the positions of need, just not in the order that I would have. But still, B- minus, not bad. Moving on to the Carolina Panthers at pick eight in the first round. They selected Christian McCaffrey, the running back from Stanford. I'm going to give this an A-. Uh, only reason why it's an A- is because I, you know, some people say, oh, no, he is the perfect back. I, I, don't, I personally don't buy that. I don't think he's the perfect back for this scheme. Uh, I don't think he's going to be a bad back by any means, but I don't think it's going to be as smooth of a, in, of a transition as people think. Leonard Fournette was always going to be the back that would be the perfect for Carolina. Uh, you know, because a team like Carolina... I'm saying this is not a fan of your team. I'm saying this is a guy that's watched the Panthers play. To be completely honest with you, they are a boring offense to watch. They like to control the clock. They play an old school style of football. Uh, just try to run it more if they're not dual read options stuff like that. That's not really the kind of kind of back that Christian McCaffrey is. But they certainly will find a way to use it. Mike Shula will find creative plays. They, you know, you basically get Christian McCaffrey. That's a whole other playbook. And, you know, I get the move too, especially Jonathan Stewart. Even though they retained him, I think this is going to be his last year. But that will be an early rotation. Stewart and McCaffrey. You have Stewart coming for short yardage. Christian McCaffrey for clear passing downs. Um, I think, I you know, obviously good pit. I, I was kind of disappointed that he didn't follow the Philadelphia Eagles. 
But it's a good pick for the Carolina Panthers now adding another playmaker in that backfield. So it's not just Cam Newton trying to do his thing. So that's an A minus. Second round pick 40, they got Curtis Samuel, the you know offensive weapon. He's probably going to be a wide receiver for uh, from Ohio State. I'm giving this a B minus. I think it's the right kind of pick, the right kind of fit, the right kind of dimension to their offense. Right now they have Benjamin and Funchess, who are two big guys. Who do they have really to separate the field? They lost Philly Brown. They lost Ted Ginn. So Curtis Samuel instantly is going to come in and fill that void. I just don't know how refined he is really as a wide receiver. He's just a gimmicky player at Ohio State. But I do like the upside on this pick. I can't give it much higher than a B-, minus, but it certainly was a dimension to the wide receiver quote that they needed to add, so I like that. So second second round pick at 64 they got Taylor Moten who I believe will be a you know he can play guard he can play tackle I personally think looking at their current depth chart he's going to be right in that competition to start at right tackle with Daryl Williams and Michael Orr uh, he was from Western Michigan I think that's you know another one of those guys I don't know if you how much you people want to read into Spark score but he has an incredibly high uh, ceiling in that regard very athletic very safe pick I think in the second round addressing the offensive line which they needed to do uh, so that is a B. Uh, pick 77 in the third round, they got Deshaun Hall, the defensive end from Texas A&M. I'm going to give this a C plus. I think there's about a round higher than what I had Deshaun Hall. But again, long, rank, long, lengthy guy. Who's he going to learn? Who's he going to sit behind? Like the prototypical long, lengthy guy in Julius Peppers. Not saying they're the same. Obviously, Julius Peppers, one of the goats. It was an athletic monster. But I definitely think Deshaun Hall, a guy that certainly needs to... You know, not, not one, he's definitely not a project player, but he's certainly not a finished product. Learn behind Julius Peppers, one of the greatest to do it. I think that's a good, real, real um, good fit, good place for him to be at this point in his career. So I'm giving that a C plus. Fifth round, 152. They got Corn Elder, the corner from Miami, getting that a C plus. A guy that's going to bring lots of fight, lights of fire to that team. And I think really right now I'm looking at our lads, which is you know usually like a, just a easy, safe thing to look at for depth chart. They have him listed as the last corner. Guarantee he's going to fight his way up to get some meaningful snaps as a rookie. Uh, six round, 192, they got Alexander Armach. I don't know who the hell that is, so that's a C minus, plead the fifth. And seventh round, they got Harrison Buckker, a kicker from Virginia Tech, or uh, Georgia Tech. I'm giving that a D. Come on, Zane Gonzalez, the guy that's won the goddamn kicker of the year, was still there. I'm pretty sure. And you didn't draft him. There was a kicker, went way, way early to the Bengals. He was already gone. But I'm pretty sure Zane Gonzalez was still there. If I'm completely wrong, just give this a C- minus because it's a goddamn kicker. But if Zane Gonzalez was still there, come on. I'm trying to bring us some competition. Graham Gano was, I don't know how, how he was last year. Remember a year ago, he's like one of the best kickers in the NFL. So overall, though, for the Panthers, I'm giving them a B. Not a bad draft at all. Christian McCaffrey, Moten, more importantly, are going to be their big-time players, I think, this year. And then you got to see what happens with Curtis Samuel. But the upside is there. Not a bad draft for the Panthers. Division up here with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who had my, I think, overall my favorite draft class. First round 19, they got OJ Howard, the tight end from Alabama. And again, kind of like Marshawn Lattimore to the Saints. I don't think a lot of people thought OJ Howard would slip to 19. Just maybe a lack of emphasis. The tight end position or teams really wanted to jump ahead and address other needs. But a perfect fit here for the Tampa Bay Bucks, who didn't really need a tight end. Cameron Brate was serviceable last year, but OJ Howard is a different type of monster than a Cameron Brate. But even with Cameron Brate, that's two tight end sets. Really opens up another dimension to your offense. That's an A. Second round, pick 50, they got Justin Evans, the safety from Texas A&M. Again, I mean, not as high as him as the prospects some other people. I'm giving it a B minus, though, because I think he can come in and compete for a starting free safety gig. Uh, third round pick, 84. They got Chris Godwin, the wide receiver from Penn State. I'm giving that a B plus. Chris Godwin tested incredibly well. Looked very, very good in Penn State's bowl game. Fairly underrated. I think he'd come in and compete for the second or the top depth on the outside because you have Deshaun and you have Mike Evans and you're going to have Humphreys working on the slot. But after that, I think Chris Godwin is going to earn that top depth role and can have some meaningful snaps here for the Buccaneers. I like that pick. Third round, 107. They got Kendall Beck with the linebacker from LSU. I think it's, it's kind of, you know, I think Quan Alexander kind of has the middle linebacker spot on lock. And Beckwith certainly can't play outside. But maybe you can maybe move Quan. He's athletic to maybe the Sam's position. And then you can have Kendall Beckwith start in the middle linebacker. I think there's a lot of upside with Beckwith. He's a big monster. Uh, was doing great things for LSU. Big time hitter. Adds another dimension. Because you got Va Levante David and Quan Alexander are kind of finesse linebackers. Whereas a guy like Beckwith is an old school, you know, I don't really know. Like, just, we'll, just, we'll just compare him to like a Ray Nitschke, I guess. Um, then the fifth round, 162, they got Jeremy McNichols, the running back from Boise State. Everyone knew he was my sleeper at the running back spot. Uh, didn't really go to a great scheme for him because he's going to be behind Doug Martin, Charles Sims, and Jaquiz Rogers. But I really do like that pick, so I'm giving that a B. And then the seventh round at 223, they got Stevie T, the nose tackle from USC. That's good value there. He's one of the top nose tackles in what was a fairly weak nose tackle class. So I'm giving that a C plus for overall a grade of an A. 
for the Tampa Bay Bucks. And if you haven't already noticed through any point during the series, I mean, they don't officially add up to what they are. It's just what I think overall as a draft class. And the Bucks did a very, very good job. And in my money, won the A NFC. The NFC, not the AFC. Like I said, we're, it's getting a little late here while I'm recording this. The NFC South. But all the teams here had very solid draft classes. So let me know in the comment section below if you agree or disagree with my grades. As always, this is your first time stopping by. Don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, it's C4 saying peace out.